We are Michelle and Brian Coleman. After years of dreaming about it, in 2017, we took our life of adventure to a new level by walking the Camino de Santiago, from St. Jean Pied de Port to Santiago, and then on to Finisterra. Follow along on this four-part series as we talk about how we prepare now, what we've learned along the way, why we keep coming back, and what we'll be doing differently on our fifth Camino in the summer of 2023. Let's talk about the five reasons we keep going back to the Camino. Are you surprised we keep going back to the Camino? Well, I mean, this is our fifth Camino and I don't think anyone, we certainly never expected that we would go back and do this again and again and again. One and done. As a matter of fact, in 2017, we said one and done. <laughs> and here we are going back again and again. So let's talk today about those five reasons we keep coming back. Well, first of all, we have to say what Caminos we've done. Okay. So in 2017, we did the Camino Frances on the Camino de Santiago in Spain. And that's the pictures you're seeing all throughout this four part series. So that was from Saint Jean Pied de Port, France, all the way to Santiago de Compostela, Spain, and then we walked on to Finisterra. In 2019, we decided we wanted to do part of that again, so we walked from Leon to Santiago. Then we flew down to Lisbon, Portugal, and we biked from Lisbon to Porto on the Camino Portuguese, and then we walked the coastal route from Porto to Tui, and then we took a boat. <laughs> And then we, walked, and into then we walked into Santiago. And that is when we started YouTube because we realized how important it was for us to start recording and creating a, a documentation of these adventures we're doing. We started it just so that when we're old, we can go back and go, look at what we did. So you, and then, you and can go up there and look at those original videos, yeah. uh, but I want to apologize for the editing. It was new for us at that point. And then point. the last Camino we did. Was... So we count that as Camino number two and number three mm -hmm. because of the Camino Frances and the Camino Portuguese. Then our last Camino, Camino number four, was the Via Francigena, where we walked from Egla, Switzerland, all the way to Rome, Italy. And now we're doing the Camino Frances again. This time we're walking again from St. Jean Pierre de Port, France, all the way to Santiago de Compostela. And, and then our plan is to walk the Camino Finisterre by walking Santiago to Muxia, to Finisterre, and then back to Santiago. Lord willing, that's what we're doing. But that leads me into, like, because we're going back and walking this first one again. With that in mind, let's talk about one of the reasons we keep going back again and again. So why are we going back? So the first reason we keep going back is because of the challenge. We love the physical challenge of doing these Caminos, but it's not just physical, it's also mental. As we've said in previous videos, it's really hard to do that walking day after day after day, 13 to 15 miles, depending on the route and the, the day. It's just a lot of work. Wait, you just scared people. You said you walk 13 to 15 miles a day. Do you have to though? I mean, you can really walk as little or as much as you want. We know Absolutely. people that have so walked, panic. <laughs> walked 20 mile days. We know people who walk two or three mile days. They yeah. get to the next village, they stop. There's also always an option to take a cab or to take a train or a bus. So you don't have to walk every step of the Camino. No. It's your Camino, you do what you want. But we love the challenge that it gives us of doing it again and again and again. And we love the challenge of bringing fresh eyes to the Camino every time we go. And I think that's part of why we're going back and doing the Camino Francis again is that we were so green back then. <laughs> we had no idea and we traveled abroad, but we just had no idea what the Camino was all about. And we didn't know where it was gonna take us. And I think going back and doing it again gives us another opportunity to just to see what's in store for us next. Reason number two that we keep going back to the Camino. The exercise. <laughs> oh, that just sounds so bad to say because it's like there's so much, so many easier ways. There's easier ways to exercise. And though we do exercise throughout the school year, we have a good regimen a couple mornings a week before work, working out together, working out on the weekends. That is great. But I think that one of the motivators to get up and do 
what we do in the morning is because we want to prepare for the Camino. And when you're preparing for other adventures, like if you're, if you're preparing for vacation, you don't work out to prepare for a vacation. Well, and let's face it, no one's going to look at the two of us and say, wow, look at that physically fit couple. <laughs> no. But the no, fact but is, we love active vacations. We do. And the other thing beyond just the exercise, it's the exercise of the body, but the exercise of the mind. You're going in these little villages, you're challenging your language um, skills, you're challenging your communication skills. You are challenging yourself to think outside of a box that we all we all live in a comfort zone box. So it's a full on it's a idea full workout of exercise, we're, mind, we're body, and spirit. Mind, body, and spirit. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Reason number three we keep going back to the Camino is relationships. It is, when you travel, you don't necessarily meet a lot of new people, but when you travel on the Camino, you create what they affectionately call a Camino family. Now, lower your expectations. It doesn't happen the same for everyone and all it, the time. It also varies a lot depending on which route you're on. Yes, when we walked the Via Francigena, we did not meet a lot of people, though we still had our Camino family. And on the Via- We were small and mighty. <laughs> and on the Camino Portuguese, we met almost zero people. Yeah, that's true. And that's different for everybody, but anyway, for us, the Camino Francis, and the reason we go back is even if we don't see a lot of people, everyone's there doing the same thing. You think about it, when you go on vacation, you're all there doing the same thing, but you're there to get away from people. And so for us, the Camino is about building those relationships. Now you gotta be able to do all the things we've talked about already, so make sure you've listened to the other parts in this four part series so you can get all of our tips. But building relationships is such a fun way. We can say we have friends from all over the world and someday we're gonna to get to all of them in Ireland and Hawaii and Washington State. They're everywhere and we love to travel and see our Camino family. Absolutely. Reason number four, we keep going back to the Camino de Santiago, or just Caminos in general, pilgrimage in general, is that we love exploring new cultures and new places. Absolutely. So um, I am a musician, and as a musician, I, and I'm also a bit of a history geek, so I love to see all these places that we go. I love to go into the churches and explore the architecture and explore mm -hmm. the music, and to hear pieces of classical music performed in the churches where they were written to be performed in. For me, I get to really geek out on that. So I get really excited about that. I get excited about going into little villages that looks like time has stood still. Mm -hmm and reminiscing on farm towns that I grew up in, the farm town I grew up in, and, and, and I can see my grandparents in those areas living there. I can, I can just see the, the, the history from, I guess, a different point of view yeah. than what you're talking about. A perfect example of that is the little village of Os Sobrero. Oh, oh it's gosh, such yes. a beautiful little village. It's at the top of one of the most difficult walking days, honestly, of the Camino, because you're just walking uphill all day long and you get to this little village and you walk over the crest of the mountain and the first thing that you see is this little hut that's been there for probably three or four hundred years well, and the it's, oldest well, church? it's actually huge the, the oldest, oldest church. church on the Camino de yeah. Santiago is in that village and it's just this tiny little village but it's a tourist town it, it is, is. It's quite a tourist stop, but it's still got this very small town vibe. Mm -hmm. And that was where we, uh, the second time we were, got there, we were on horseback and the, the guide that we had for the day took us into one of the bars right in the top of the town and our backpacks were waiting for us. And they recognized him, of course, because he's there every day. And he introduced us to the bar owner and they started pouring us wine and they started bringing us food. And we just got to explore this culture that was so unknown to us prior. When you travel on vacation, you most likely go to 
the the big cities you you know if you were going to Spain you go to Madrid you go to Barcelona and don't get me wrong we're doing that at the very end of our trip so make sure you subscribe because you're going to get to see um, a lot of non Camino areas of Spain but when you can experience a country in the little villages that aren't made for tourists, the tourists don't walk through there. We've been to a village of 10 or one for that say. You and know. we call it slow tourism mm -hmm. and other people have too. And that's what we love about it is it's not that we walk slow, although we walk very slow. <laughs> it's that you're not just rushing through a town and hitting all the highlights mm -hmm. like we'll do when we have three days in Barcelona, but we're hitting um, all these little tiny villages and seeing them on market day or seeing them on the day that the cheese truck comes to or town. Or the propane truck or the meat truck. And experiencing yeah. and living in that country, in that culture as the locals yes. live. It's just an experience yes. you can't get when you do a beach vacation or you go to Disney World or you go to the resort. Though somewhere. we love all of that too. Oh, they all have their time and place. But pilgrimage, is a is a calling that once it calls you you can't escape it and it's addictive so watch out if you're planning your first camino yeah. it's not your last Reason number five is the simplicity of it. And some of you, when you hear what I'm about to say, are gonna go, oh no, I'm out. <laughs> I wear two outfits for the entire summer. <gasps> but it's wash and wear, it's wash and wear. So it's simple. Um, when we have our RV, something goes wrong. Something inevitably. always breaks in the travel trailer. There's yeah. always something that needs to be cleaned, cooked, fixed. And hopefully it's not all happening on the side of the road because we yeah. broke down. The, the Camino, though your feet hurt, your body aches at the end of the day, it is a simple life. And by the time you wake up the next morning, you're re-energized. Many days, the most difficult decision you have to make is are we gonna eat at that bar over there or are we gonna eat at that bar over there? And usually the decision is based on which one has fewer steps. Well, make sure that you are following this entire series, the four videos. We have one more video to go. And on that video, we're gonna tell you what we're doing differently this summer uh, on our fifth Camino. But just to recap, our five reasons we keep going back to the Camino are- The challenge. The exercise. The relationships we make along the way. Exploring new areas. And simplicity. We hope you're enjoying taking this adventure with us and we look forward to seeing you next time.